All right, so for quiz five, let's open these, click the inventory sheet. We need to name this range, so we're going to name it inventory. What we've got is a bunch of sales of shoes here and a bunch of different shoe types and sizes and all that. So now what we want is if we put a product number in here, WE006, I want a formula that brings back the quantity for that particular row and column out of that big inventory grid. So to do that, to get a row and a column, you use the index function. So for the index, it requires three parameters. So the first one is the inventory. Now we need a row number. So to get the row number, I need to find WEE6 over in column A and have the match function tell me which row number that is. So if we count down from the top or from cell A3, how far down is WEE6? Looks like the looks like the seventh row. So I want to match that in that range, comma zero for an exact match. Now for the column number, there's a couple different ways to do this. I do it one way, they do it another. They say to find the word quantity, so use the match function to find the word quantity, and they say to put it in double quotes, comma, and then the lookup array is this group of cells, the header cells, across the top of that table. So highlight those cells, comma, exact match. Oops, forgot the parentheses. Okay, so it comes back with a 2. And we see for the WE006, the quantity is 2. So we're all good. Let's change it to WE15, and it comes back with a different number. So if we come down and find 15, what's the quantity for that one? Yeah, right there. 4. So it's working. Now let's see why it's working. This here is the row number. So we go and find WE15 in that range of A3 through A39. That should give us a number. To show you how this index function works, there's three parameters. There's a table, and then a row number and a column number. So if we do the evaluate formula, let's see how this looks. So we go to inventory. Hit Evaluate, and it comes back with the table name. Next, it goes and gets the match function and puts it together. Finds WE15 in this range over here. And then, if I hit Evaluate again, it gives me the number 16. So that was the 16th row. Likewise, I want to find the quantity in this range up here. And if I evaluate that, it's the 16th row and the 5th column. So the intersection of that is what the index function gives us. And that happens to be four. Now, how, how I would do it, this is how SimNet wants you to do it. But how I would do it, I would notice that, hey, this word quantity is right next to it. Why type it and hard code it in there? Because if you do that, you get the same answer. But they want you to do it their way. So hard code the quantity in there. Oh, poor me. I've let them know about it, but we'll see if they they fix it in time to do the to do this. All right. Next step. For the next step, looks like we're going to do a sum ifs formula, sum IFS. So over here, for all the black size 8 shoes, how many are in stock? So if I were to go through and manually find all the black size 8 shoes, there's another one, there's one, here's two more, here's two more, and if I add those up, I get seven. It's like, all right, well, that was a manual pain in the butt process. So let's do it with a formula. Check those boxes. All right, so we're going to do a sum if statement to sum all those together. So our sum range is the things that we want to sum, comma, and then our first criteria is the shoe color. And I'm going to do an F4 in here to put my absolute referencing in there, F4, F4, F4 everywhere. 
So I have my sum range and my criteria range. Now against that criteria, what do I want to look for? I want to look for the word black. All right. The next one is the next criteria range is the shoe size. So highlight those cells and hit F4 and then click on this cell here, L13, and there's my seven. And if I did my referencing right, I should be able to drag it down and get the right answers. Trust me, I got my referencing right. Check all those boxes. All right, let's go to the next step here. Here we now have another range of surveys. So for every time somebody buys a shoe for a size and color, how comfortable is it? How, how good is the fit? How good is the style? What's the overall value? So we've got a bunch of surveys here. So we name this table survey. Now on the criteria tab, we're going to end up using a database function. So we have to have some criteria over here. So we're going to put in some the first few letters of a product, so rug. So rugged hiking shoes. If I go out to the survey and find all the rugged hiking shoes and then highlight the comforters for the comfort level for those, and it looks like 7.75. So I can do it manually, and that's always a good cross check, but I want a formula that does this. So it's equals database average, and the database name is the table name survey. The field is this comfort here and then the criteria are these two cells here and if I hit F4 at this point it will put absolute references around that even though we only need mixed references the book likes to use absolute references so just to get through this assignment we're gonna let them do their thing now ideally I'd like to be able to just copy that down but see how that C4 turns into C5, C6, C7 as I drag it down? If I were to put a dollar sign in there and drag that down, that would solve that problem. And then all I would have to do is come in there and change the criteria from B1 to B4 and B2 to B5, and it'd give me the right answer. Oh, I suppose it would give me the right answer if I went in and put values in cell 5 like I'm supposed to. B5, we put in com star and then las star and sir star and gl star. Again, the star is a wild card, so it's going to pick up every word that starts with GLI. So now if I drag this down and change that 4 to a 5, or that 1 to a 4, and that that one to a five, we get the right answer. Then I could copy that down and then change all the criteria. But the book doesn't want us to do that. So we'll go do it their way just to get, get through this. So take out that dollar sign that I think should be there and we copy it down and change that one to a four, that two to a five again. That one, seven and eight. Oh, as I copied that down, looks like that four needs to turn into a, it needs to stay four. Since I took the dollar sign out, when I dragged it down, all those numbers incremented. So let me go back and change C, all these C whatever is back to C4, since they didn't let me put my dollar sign in there passive aggressive dude that I am all right so that one's right uh, oops I got to change my criteria out here this one's 10 and 11 this one's 13 and 14 and that middle one that one's four and five If I want to use my wizard to invoke the average formula, I can come up here and just click that, and it automatically gives me the average. All right, so now I look at my overall average rating, and I want to say if it's greater than 9, it's excellent. 
If it's greater than eight, it's above average. If it's greater than five, it's average. And if it's none of those, it's poor. So do an if function, if s function, where we look at g5 and we say, hey, are you greater than or equal to nine? If you are, put in the word excellent and click F4. Ideally, again, I would not put absolute referencing around this. I would just put the mixed referencing and have the dollar sign in front of the number since we're just dragging it down. But we got to do things how SimNet wants us to. So now I check, is, Z, is G5 greater than 8? If it is, then output J6. Next logical test is G5 greater than or equal to 5. If it is, click average, F4, to put absolute references. Finally, there's two ways you could do this. I would probably just say true, and it's kind of like none of the above. If we get down to this point, we just want the word poor. So you could just say true, and true is always going to evaluate the true. So it's just going to, if you get to this last if s function, this last logical argument, it's just going to give you the word poor. Close my parentheses, hit enter. Now they don't want the word true. They would rather come up with a logical argument that covers all the other possibilities. So if they say G5 is less than 5, then say poor. And that works for me. That covers all the mathematical options. But sometimes I want to take a shortcut, and I don't want to think through the, all that logic, so I could just put the word true in there. All right, now we want the right uh, column width, and I think it's, if you double-click on the column, it gets close, but it wants 13.57, so I have to change that just a little bit and hit OK. Check that box. We're almost done. Now we're doing a depreciation formula. So why they put this in the middle of this section, I'm not sure. I would have put it in the financial section of the course or the book, and that's what I do. So we'll cover this in more depth come chapter or module 6. So don't worry about this one for now. But the formula to find the depreciation is DB, and we want the cost of the equipment, absolutely referenced, even though it doesn't need to be, and then the salvage value, and at the end of the life, how much is the piece of equipment worth? So after eight years, this $175,000 beast is worth twenty two grand. So how much can we deduct off of our taxes due to depreciation per year? And that's the way we go. And then you can hit Alt equals to come up with the right number. And we're good to go on that step. So let's check that and do the last step. So right click on the tabs down below and unhide the email page. And use the concatenate function to stick together the Vincent and Bowman and some letters to make an email address. So concatenate or concat, if you've got the most recent version of Excel, A5, B5, and then in double quotes, at weshoes.org. In double quotes, close parentheses, and there you go. Now, if you wanted to get a little fancy, don't do this on your homework, but if email address is a really lower case, so you could just wrap that in the lower function and it would take out all the capital letters, which aren't real 100% correct. It works, so we'll take it and put it back the way they want it, but that's just me being a perfectionist again. Copy that down, save it, submit it, get our perfect score, run away, start working on assignment five. So let's do it. Upload the file. That's the current timestamp. Do that. Yeah, submit it. Do, 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 do. And there we go. Perfect score. Yay. Move on. All right. Thank you very much for working with me on Quiz 5.